Okay, so now that we've discussed the actual operating temperature, let's talk about cost of ownership. Let's talk about cost of ownership over five years. Numbers are boring, right? But snapshots, really ones that paint the picture, are fairly interesting. So let's look at running a 24 light system over five years. What's the cost of ownership? What is it going to cost you to run this archaic system? The answer to run this system and to run the appropriate HVAC, it's gonna, for a 24 lamp system, it's gonna run you about $144,000. For me to run a 24 lamp iGrow induction system, it's gonna cost me about $27,000. So $144,000, $27,000. So not only is it a substantial savings in your pocketbook, you save 60% on electricity. Your carbon footprint has been reduced by 60%. That's got to make you feel good on the inside. So we've talked about the longevity. Uh, we've talked about the thermal and heat management. I want to talk to you and close with the quality of the light. What does that mean? Let's talk about lumen depreciation. This is what a lot of people don't talk about because it's an ugly fact of HID lighting. The moment it comes out of the box, the moment it's screwed in, it begins to degrade and not a little bit, rapidly. By the time you're at 12,000 hours on a standard HID bulb, you're at 70% of the optimum lumens. So if you started with a lamp that had 100,000 lumens, after 12,000 hours, you're at 70,000 lumens. That's crappy. Look at the iGrow induction light, for example. At 70,000 hours, it still has 90% of its lumen maintenance. 90%. So if your iGrow induction light was putting out 100,000 lumens, at 70,000 hours, 70% 70 of its lifetime, it's still putting out 90% of those lumens. Unbelievable. So you have efficiency, you have tremendous thermal management, you have longevity, you have environmentally conscious with respect to not only the mercury, but respect to the carbon impact associated with the energy needed to drive it. But the big question is, does it grow plants? Well, let me show you. Those of you who know me know that I'm a big fan of the PAR meter. It's photosynthetically active radiation. People can talk lumens and lux all day. Plants don't care. Plants care about the quality of light. They care about the, care about the spectral frequency that they've evolved to use. So when we're talking about the quality of a light, let's all agree that PAR should probably be the unit that we should use to determine whether or not a light is good for a plant. Real quickly, what we have here is a point source light, a light that is going to emanate light from essentially this arc tube. And as a result, the canopy is going to be projected in a cone-like fashion. This is not linear light. The induction light is linear light, meaning that if I was to take a PAR meter across and image the canopy that's being lit with an HID light, there would be fringing, meaning the outside 20% of the garden would not receive the same amount or the intense amount of light directly beneath the ball. With that also said, the area directly beneath the bulb is getting thermal stress because it's getting the bulk of the lumens being projected by the lamp. So as a result, I have to use a fan across the top of the canopy just to keep the thermal temperature down at the center to the point where the plants aren't being stressed. Why is this unique? Let's take a look at the induction light. I hope you guys can get a good look at this. Um, I'm going to come up inside. Can you guys get that? As I move across, you're seeing values that really are pretty stable. They don't dramatically change across the entire land. Um, we're seeing peaks around 1,445, 1,450. We're seeing um, some, as my hand is shaking, as low as 1,295. Uh, the good news is the NASA study indicates that 800 par is the maximum amount necessary to grow a plant. How do I know? Because I worked on a project with NASA. Uh, the fact of the matter is, anything over 800 par is extra. It's abundant. So there's no concern about this, this light not performing optimally for your garden. Now if I was to do that, like I said, underneath an HID light, you would be able to see a dramatic change in the imaging. As I move to the outside, I could lose as much as 60% of the total lumens. So, better spectral spread more even light truly across the distance of the reflector, longevity, it's environmentally conscious due to its respect to the mercury and its carbon footprint, thermal management is a breeze, literally all I have to use is a 0.46 amp little tiny fan versus all this infrastructure you see behind me, 
I mean, at this point, I really don't even think I need to make an argument. It should be clear to you. The iGrow induction light is the one and only superior choice for your indoor garden. And, you know, it's about time that we, uh, we take responsibility for what we're doing and become stewards of the planet instead of just hogging all this energy. Anyways, Matt, the grower, thanks for stopping by. Peace.